kids, it's Cupcake Cami so I'm back here with another 10 day Lolita challenge video. Today we're dealing with prompt number 8. Facts about your Lolita wardrobe. Truth be told, I always struggle with these fact prompts. I never know what people might consider interesting enough to be included in such a fact video or there might be things that I've shared somewhere already and if someone has checked that out then they already know it and I kind of want to give everyone facts that they wouldn't already know but I think that might be putting a bit too much pressure on myself still I spend quite a lot of time thinking about facts that I think might be considered interesting and hopefully I managed to come up with eight ones that will do just that fact number one my main piece collection is primarily tricolour as in it's either shades of white including ivory shades of red or shades of blue now i have one or two pieces that break away from that pattern i have one black piece i have um two that are more on the brown side even though they're still like beigey with brown prints and i have one mint even it, even though it's a very bluish mint <laughs> Still, if you look at my wardrobe and the main pieces as a whole, they're predominantly either white or red or blue in whatever shade. Fact number two, as far as Japanese brands are concerned and excluding Bodyline, I have five main pieces that were bought directly from the brand, either in store or or via one of their official websites or whilst um, at an event and if we include all kinds of pieces so not just main pieces not just dresses skirts whatnot but any kind of brand item that was bought directly from them that number goes up to 35. Back number three I own a fair share of pretty rare pieces that I was convinced I was never going to get. The best examples of those are Mary Magdalene's Paulina JSK in navy, which I hardly see let alone in navy. It's Innocent World's Revival Suite Teddy Bear JSK in blue, which after I got it, then I've seen it a few more times pop up in blue. It's very common in pink or in brown, blue less so and um, Heinuli's Whipped Cream Kitty in blue as well and that's just Korean brands trying to track him down second hand quite a chore so far there hasn't been a piece that I wasn't able to get sometimes I had to wait a long time for them but ultimately the ones that I really really wanted I was able to get so if I don't have something right now it means that I either don't want it enough or that I'm still waiting for that rare opportunity to see if my luck runs out. <laughs> Fact number four, I still own the very first two main pieces that I ever bought. They are both from Bodyline. One is the wrap ribbon halter neck JSK, which I've since converted to be regular JSK, and it, the other one's the macaron print. I bought them both in store in, in Osaka whilst I was there in 2011 so that means that they've been in my possession for over seven years now I still love them both even though there are some things that I'd change if I could have I love them to pieces and I don't imagine myself getting rid of them anytime soon fact number five I own three pairs of shoes from Japanese brands again not counting body line and each of these three pairs is from a different brand so i have a pair from angelic pretty i have one from meta and i have one from innocent world and of these three innocent world ones are by far the most comfortable ones as far as i'm concerned although it might be because the heel is a lot lower and i low-key want to complete my mini collection of brand shoes by adding something from baby or alice and the pirates but I'm not actively looking out for it. If it happens, it happens. If not, I'm not complaining either. Fact number six. 
the cheapest main piece that I currently own is um, a JSK from Meta. It's called Polka Dots Shering Pinafore JSK, which you would have seen me unbox. I'll link it up here. Do check it out because it was a surprise for me. I did not anticipate loving it as much as I did. And I got it for, at the time it was around £15 on Mercari or, or Frill or one of them. Not even my body line was cheaper than that. <laughs> Fact number seven. Whilst I know that it's not the best way to think about your Lolita wardrobe and it's not practical and it really is a very kind of spoiled um, materialistic way of thinking about it, I would love to own a piece from every Japanese brand that I like. At one point I thought that it was I'd love to own at least one piece from every major Japanese brand. But then I realised that there are some that I can appreciate from afar but I don't feel the need to have anything from them, like Moitié. And there are some that, whilst I might really love something from them, the chances of it fitting are very slim so I'll have to be quite particular about what is it that I end up getting. At the moment, the list of brands that I'd love to include in my wardrobe Preferably in something bigger, so either a main piece or maybe something like a blouse or a pair of tights or something like this. Uh, Victorian Maiden. I had one dress from them and sadly it didn't fit. Atelier Pierrot. Throwing it out there even though it's not a Japanese brand, I should have rephrased that, but Leaf. I'd love to have something from Leaf. Their, their designs are absolutely beautiful. Physical Drop. And Coupot. I'm sure that I'll add some as they come along, I'll maybe some I'll fall out of love with or decide that it's not worth the hassle anymore. So at the moment it stands sort of at this. I know, I know that this is such a frivolous wish and there's absolutely no practical reasoning behind it whatsoever but I cannot help wanting that and I feel in my heart that it's in part a way of me showing my appreciation and support of those brands. I think it's also a great way to appreciate some of the smaller labels that don't get as much love because as you would have known from my video one, even I'm saying Angelic Pretty is still my favourite brand despite other ones being incredible and AP not being up to my taste levels these days, not enough for me to want to purchase something. Whereas there's so many smaller Japanese brands and Korean brands and whatever kind of brands that don't get appreciated as much. So to be able to say, for example, all oh, my blouses from Milfleur or I have a pair of tights from somewhere or this is from Atelier Piero or whatever, the brands that people who are new into Lolita don't tend to jump at because they're less spoken about. I think it's a sign of showing that you want the smaller labels to be just as appreciated as the big ones that are already popular and don't need any extra marketing or advertising. And finally, fact number eight, to date, and I may need to revise that with an update if anything changes in the meantime. I have spent on all of my main pieces, including those that I have since sold, approximately 3,500 British pounds. That is spending spread across seven years. It's not like I just dropped 3,500 pounds right here and there. It is spread across seven years and the majority of that it was bought second hand at bargain prices and whatnot. God only knows how much that figure would come up to if I was to include all other kinds of pieces, all so the shoes, bags, blouses, socks, God I have so many socks, everything. I have no regrets, let's put it out there. And on that bombshell, thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you found at least some of these facts remotely interesting. <laughs> if there's anything that you would like to know that you feel I should include, do let me know in the comments. I 
if there's a lot it might end up into a separate video if not i'll just answer your questions there and then i encourage all of you to get in on this challenge the 10 day leader challenge is really fun i'm enjoying doing all these videos and i hope that you enjoy watching them as much as i enjoy making them if you do please like this video comment on it subscribe to the channel you also have the option of buying me a cup of coffee my coffee page link is in the description just as the link to the original 10 daily Lolita challenge blog post is so if you want to further motivate me to putting out more content you can do so by buying a metaphorical cup of coffee and as always i encourage all of you to check out my blog cupcakes and unicorns where you'll find more lolita content thank you so much and i'll see you in the next one take care bye